Let us start with some basic terms that you need to understand. Natural numbers are the numbers starting from 1 and going on forever like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Then, a prime number is a natural number greater than 1 that has only two distinct positive divisors, 1 and itself. For example, 7 is a prime number because its only divisors are 1 and 7. Numbers like 6 is not a prime number because it can be divided by 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, there is one more term that you need to know, which is coprime. Coprime, also known as relatively prime numbers, are a set of two or more natural numbers that have no common factors other than one. For example, 8 and 15 are coprime because the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8, and the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15, and thus they have no common factors other than 1. So note that two numbers can be coprime without being prime. Great. Now imagine you start an experiment where you keep picking two random natural numbers again and again, say A and B. For each pair, you check whether they are coprime or not. Now, if you repeat this process thousands or millions of times, something very surprising happens. One of the GOAT mathematicians, Euler, showed that if you divide the number of pairs that turn out to be coprime by the total number of generated pairs, you will see that slowly this number settles down to a fixed value. That value is exactly 6 divided by pi squared. My mind is blown away right now. Yes. You heard it right. Let me show you the same using a simulation and watch how the ratio approaches 6 divided by pi squared, which is roughly 0 0.608. But you might wonder how prime numbers, coprime numbers, and pi are connected. Let us see. Before we begin, here's a fundamental theorem of arithmetic we will need for this proof. Every natural number greater than 1 can be broken down into prime factors. For example, the number 12 can be written as 2 times, 2 times 3, or 2 square, times 3. Another example is 60, which can be written as 2 square times 3 times 5. Here is one more example for a bigger number, like this number can be written as 2 to the 6th times 3 cube, times 5 square times 7. What's amazing is that this factorization is always unique for each number. So any natural number n can be written as 2 to the power a times 3 to the power b times 5 to the power c times 7 to the power d times so on. This is what makes prime numbers so important in mathematics. Now see the magic of Euler. Consider this sum of 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on. Now Euler thought, how can we rewrite this entire sum using prime numbers? He came up with this amazing idea. For each prime number, p, write its geometric series. 1 plus 1 divided by p squared plus 1 divided by p to the fourth plus 1 divided by p to the sixth, and so on. Now for any infinite geometric series with first term as a and common ratio as r like a, plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cube, and so on. The sum of this series is simple A over 1 minus R. Note that for this series to converge, R must lie between minus 1 and 1. Now this is a geometric series with the first term A as 1 and a common ratio R as 1 divided by P squared. Note that since P is greater than 1, so R is always less than 1. So the sum of this infinite geometric series is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over p squared. Noise. Now, to make the explanation simple to understand, for the time being, just take prime numbers 2 and 3 and write their geometric series like these. Then simply multiply them. Then expand and watch what kind of terms appear. When we multiply these two series together, we form all pairwise products, where we take one term from the first series and one from the second. 
each of these products has the form 1 divided by 2 to some power of 2, a multiplied by 1 divided by 3 to some power of 2, b. So this becomes 1 over 2 to the power of a times 3 to the power of b whole square, right? But hey, because of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we have just seen, this is the same as 1 divided by the square of the natural number n, where n equals 2 to the power of a times 3 to the power of b. To make it concrete, let us expand the first few terms and see which integers they correspond to. First, 1 times 1 equals 1, so n equals 1. Next, 1 divided by 2 squared times 1 equals 1 divided by 4, so n equals 2. Then, 1 times 1 divided by 3 squared equals 1 divided by 9, so n equals 3. Next, 1 divided by 2 squared times 1 divided by 3 squared equals 1 divided by 36, so n equals 6. Next, 1 times 1 divided by 3 to the 4th equals 1 divided by 81, so n equals 9. Finally, 1 divided by 2 to the 4th times 1 divided by 3 squared equals 1 divided by 144, so n equals 12. So by multiplying just the geometric series of two prime factors, 2 and 3, we have already produced many of the 1 divided by n squared terms, specifically those integers n that have only 2 and 3 as their prime factors. So you can see that if we multiply this geometric series for all the primes, then thanks to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, every natural number n greater than 1 in the sum of 1 over n square will appear exactly once in the expansion. So this expanded product equals the full sum of 1 divided by n squared. Just take one example, like n equals 60. Its prime factorization is 2 squared times 3 times 5. In the product expansion, this term comes from picking 1 divided by 2 to the fourth power from the prime 2 series, then 1 divided by 3 squared from the prime 3 series, and 1 divided by 5 squared from the prime 5 series, and 1 from every other prime series. Multiplying these together gives 1 divided by 3,600 or 60 squared. Now, Convert the geometric series to the closed form formula I have shown before like this. So the sum of 1 over n square will be equal to the product of this geometric sum. This is nothing less than magic because the sum on the left side is the famous Basel problem, which made Euler world-renowned mathematician. Euler showed that this infinite sum of 1 over n squared for all natural numbers equals pi squared divided by 6. I have made a detailed video explaining the same step by step, and the link is in the description. Watch that later, but first finish this video. This means this product is equal to pi squared divided by 6. Let us keep this aside. Now coming back to our original problem of how dividing the number of pairs that turn out to be coprime by the total number of generated pairs is exactly 6 divided by pi squared. I think you can now feel some connection. OK, now listen to this carefully. We know that two numbers are coprime if they don't share any factor except 1. Now, because every number is made from primes, so two numbers a and b are coprime if they have no common prime factors, which means no prime p divides both a and b. So let's ask, what's the probability that a given prime number p does not divide both numbers a and b? For that, we know that the probability that p divides one random natural number, say a, is 1 over p. This is because, for example, take the prime number p equals 3. Here is the list of natural numbers from 1 to 20. The numbers that p can divide are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18, right? This means, among any block of three consecutive numbers, exactly 1 is divisible by 3. So the probability is 1 by 3. 
Similarly, if we consider p equals 5, then the numbers that p can divide are 5, 10, 15, and 20, right? This means among any block of five consecutive numbers, exactly one is divisible by five. So the probability is one by five. So the probability that P divides a randomly chosen natural number A is one over P. Similarly, the probability that P divides a randomly chosen natural number B is also one over P. Since the events of P dividing A and P dividing B are independent, the probability that P divides both A and B at the same time is 1 over P multiplied by 1 over P, which equals 1 over P squared. Therefore, the probability that P does not divide both A and B is 1 minus 1 over P squared. Wow! Now you can see where we are going. This is for 1 prime P, like we found the probability that 5 does not divide both A and B is 1 minus 1 over 5 squared. So, to make sure this is valid for all the primes P, we multiply these probabilities over all primes, giving the total probability as the product over all primes of 1 minus 1 over P squared. Now, we have already found this product, so just take the reciprocal of the same and we get this probability as 6 over pi squared, and that's it. Massive respect to Euler for coming up with this absolutely brilliant and mind-blowing idea. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.